Okay, so let's finish up this section here. Now, I added on marginal analysis to here because we sec we, ac we actually skipped it in section um, 2.4. Um, I don't like how the book covers it necessarily, so I decided to just kind of add it on to section 2.5. So here we go. The concept of marginal, whenever you hear the word marginal, um, what we're really talking about is next. So if we're talking about marginal profit, we're talking about how much money are you going to make on the next item you sell. Or if we're talking about marginal cost, what we're saying is how much does the next item cost you to make, um, so on and so forth. So marginal can take on any kind of meaning you would like it to, to take, uh, just depending on the context of the problem. So here's a silly one I did just so we can wrap our heads around it with an easy concept. Um, let the cost of producing custom pencils be described by the following function. So what you can say is maybe this cost reflects, um, well, I don't know, let's see. If, if you kind of think about it, if n equals zero, that means we're going to create zero pencils, um, and there would be a $100 cost because when you put in zero for n, it makes that zero, so we just be left with 100. So what we're saying here is it there sounds like there's a $100 setup cost for producing pencils. Um, and then each time you, then when you put in a number, like 10, how much would it cost you to make your 10 pencils? So, and that's actually what this first problem is asking us right here. It says, you know, how, producing 10 pencils. Um, so here we go. Let's figure it out. The cost of producing 10 pencils would be uh, 0 0.01 times 10 plus 100. So therefore, what is that? Uh, shift to decimal place in one spot. So it's 10 cents plus $100. So it looks like it's $100 and 10 cents to produce uh, 10 pencils. So far, so good. Now, do note, we have not done any calculus yet. Um, okay, so what would the cost of producing 100 pencils be then? And you can kind of see there's a bit of an idea here that I'm hoping you catch on to. Um, you might have already noticed it. If you haven't, we'll do a couple more of these. Okay, cost of producing 100 pencils, that would shift to some place, two places over, so that'd be a dollar. All right, so it's a dollar plus 100, so that means it's $101 to produce 100 pencils. How about a thousand pencils? Okay, I hope at this point you've gotten, you're, you're kind of realizing what's going on here. And if not, that's okay, that's okay. We'll, you'll see it soon enough, I'm quite certain. Um, so let's see, that'd be $10 plus 100. So that means the total cost would be $110 to produce a thousand pencils. So now, the if you haven't caught onto it here, this this will hopefully make you catch it. How much does your cost go up to produce one the produce 1,001 pencils compared to 1,000 pencils? So what I'm saying is, how much does the 1,001st pencil cost you? So just because we're talking about how much does your cost go up from here to there? Well, if you haven't caught it already. Do the cost, we already did the cost of a thousand. Whoops, it should be right here, not a hundred. It should be a thousand. There we go. We already did the cost of a thousand pencils. So if you need to, do the cost of one thousand and one thousand and one pencils, and you will see I left off a Oh, no, that was right. So there we go. Um, so the cost of one thousand pencils was $110. So one thousand and one pencils would be one hundred ten dollars and one cent so therefore the difference the amount we go up would be the two of those numbers subtracted right so therefore it is zero point zero one so the cost to make that one thousand and first pencil is a penny hmm could you have seen that from just looking at the equation it's a line we have, we start with an initial cost of $100, and then our slope is a penny. It's a slope is one cent. So which means every time we make one more pencil, our costs are gonna go up one cent. Okay, so now what I want you to do is do the derivative of our function C, our fu cost function, and then evaluate it at 1,000 and see what you get. So if you remember, our cost function was 0 0.01 uh, times, I believe it was N plus a hundred. So therefore the derivative would be, well, all right, our variable is n, so it has a one exponent of one, so we bring that out to the front, that would multiply to make one times n to the zero, 
and then derivative of a constant zero. So, oh, that simplifies out pretty nice. That's just gonna turn into one cent. Interesting, okay. So let's interpret the meaning of this. Okay, so what's the meaning? Let's, let's, what's the meaning? When we do a derivative, remember, sometimes it's hard to see it this way. So that's why I recommend changing it to the other notation. Okay, and if you put this over one, what are we saying? Well, the numerator was change in cost, so that's dollars. The denominator was change in pencils, number of pencils. So what it looks like here we're saying is it's one cent per one pencil, or a penny per pencil. Huh, interesting. So the derivative, when we do the derivative and evaluate it at a uh, value, what we're actually, one way of interpreting it is marginal cost or marginal profit or marginal whatever your vet, your function is describing. It's the cost to go to the next item, the change to go from the thousandth to the thousand and first. Cool. Okay, so I will let you fill in here how you want to describe that. Um, it's kind of what I just said verbally, so you can write that out. Um, I do want to add in uh, another example of it. So let's do very quickly find the marginal profit and I'm going to write down a, a function for you here. Find the marginal profit of um, let's see P of C which is equal to 0 0.2 C squared minus 5000 C minus 100 thousand. Okay. What we're going to define C here as the number of cars made and P is your profit. So what I've kind of done is made a crude model um, for if you were a car manufacturer and you were going to develop cars then this would be your profit model. Now as you could expect um, if we were to put in the value of one, let's think about what that would be saying. That would mean we're going to make one car. It would be a one of a kind. Um, unless we sold a car for a very large sum of money, we would probably lose money on this um, because it's very expensive to make the first of anything and then it gets cheaper and cheaper as you go along. Um, so if we kind of filled in with a one, what we would expect to see um, would be, whoops, would be a large negative number. So if you kind of work that out, you'll notice right away, uh, we're going to subtract 100,000, we're going to subtract 5,000, and then we're going to add 0.20 cents. Fantastic. Yeah. Can you see it's going to be a negative? Okay. All right. So now the question that I really want you to answer is find the marginal profit of this. Um, and then let's do it for when you are producing Let's do something that would be a very small run of numbers. How about 10,000 cars? That would not be very much. That would be a very unpopular car or kind of a new car that you're limiting how many you want out there. So for example, the Chevy Volt had a very limited run its first year because it was experimental and they didn't want to put too many of them out on the road. So I think they released somewhere in the 10,000 range for the number of volts for that first year. They came out in 2010. Um, so, I will let you take a run at it, pause the video, give it a shot, see if you can find the marginal profit for producing 10,000 cars. Okay, so here we go. How do you get marginal profit? Well, we have to remember in our head, marginal is just a keyword, it's just a, a, a trigger word that tells us to take the derivative. Okay, so let's take the derivative. The profit of this function. Uh, the change in profit would be, all right, so let's see, bring the two out to the front, so that'd be 0 0.04 C minus, and then, the, all right, so there's bring the one out to the front, so that'd be 5,000, and then that last number's a constant, so we'll leave it right there. Okay, so that would be our marginal profit equation. Now let's, let's throw in our number of cars of 10,000 cars, and let's see what that actually comes out to be. So that's 0 0.4 times 10,000 minus 5,000 handy dandy calculator. I feel like Blue from, or whatever his name is, Steve from Blue's Clues. Handy dandy notebook. 
all right, there we go, minus 5. Whoops, it helps if you actually get the 5. Okay, so barring any typos, barring any typos, I am showing we are at a negative $1,000. So what that means, excuse me, um, what that means is, um, what, what, actually, you take a second and think about it. Okay, um, what did you come up with? Did you rewrite your function, your, your derivative function here, as the units I would recommend to help you see what it, what it means? So what, we're, what are we saying here? It, remember, the numerator is change in profit, and then the denominator is number of cars. So what it says is our profit is going down $1,000 per car. So to go to the uh, 10,001st car, our profits are going to go down. Huh, that doesn't sound great. But if you compare that to where we started, it's actually a very small drop. Um, if you go and do, if you were to do this exact same thing but plug in one, <laughs> you would see that this is much better. You'd much rather be only losing a thousand dollars more. All right, so now let's do the exact same question, but now what if we move, bump it to 20,000 cars? What does that number come out to be? I'm going to go ahead and jump to the answer here. And as you could see, I came up with us making $3,000. Now, does that mean our profit is $3,000? No. Remember, remember, remember what we're actually saying here. It's change in profit per change in car. So what it's saying is the amount of profit we make is going to go up $3,000 per car we make when we're at the 20,000th car. So going to the 21st thousand car, our profit will go up $3,000. That does not mean we'll be profitable. That just means that if we were super, super negative, we're going to be $3,000 less negative than that. Our profits will go up. Um, so there might be some um, period of time before we actually start making money. But, 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 at least we're going in the right direction. We're going up. Now, let me kind of show you one other little important idea here. Let's talk about it graphically very, very quickly. So let's just pretend what we're looking at here is right here is the 20,000th car. And if our graph looks something like this, what we're saying here is we're making a prediction. We're saying, okay, because remember, all a derivative really is talking about is the slope of the tangent line. So what we're saying here is the slope of this tangent line is 3,000. It's 3,000, right? So what we're saying is if you go over to the 20,000 and first car, we're going to go over one, up 3,000. But notice this line is way below our curve, so it's actually an underestimate. Does everybody see that? It's an underestimate. It's not going to be correct because um, our graph was concave up. So the slope that we had predicted was not as steep as the slope of what's about to come. So therefore, it was an underestimate. Now, if our actual graph, if our actual graph was concave down instead of concave up, maybe something like something like this, where you'd say this was. Actually, I don't want it to be right at the maximum. And let's try something like this. There we go. So there's our twenty thousand. There's our line. So now what you'll notice, there would be our slope. And notice, 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 we're now not below the line, now we're above the line. So in this case, our slope would be a overestimate. We'd be too high. We really wouldn't make as much as we were predicting. And notice the reason why is because our graph is concave down. So because the graph is going down faster and faster and faster and faster, our slopes are getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. And the negative, this slope, slope would not get us to the next point on the line. It would be too high. So one very important thing to understand about when we use derivatives to find marginal analysis, it's important to be able to interpret if it's an overestimate or an underestimate. Um, and this can be done by simply just looking at the shape of your graph. And we will learn to do that using calculus uh, a little bit later. So for now, you can just put your function in your graphing calculator and kind of look at its concavity uh, and get an idea if it's opening up, if it's concave up or concave down. Um, 
And if you're not familiar with that concept from Math 151, we will review it when we go on a little bit later. Um, it won't keep you from being able to do any problems, but it's just good, some, good, a good idea to have in your head at this point. Okay, um, best of luck. Practice your derivatives. Practice, 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 and just do a thousand problems and a thousand more problems.